Happy Monday, everybody. Hope y'all all had wonderful weekends. Welcome into Undisputed. I'm Jen Hale here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, it took them 82 games, Gil, but they showed some fight. They showed some they grit and determination last night. Who needs Lagon? There you go. Huh? You, see, you see Kobe. I mean, hey, when you got Austin Reeves, who yeah, cares about yeah, Lagon, yeah. right? Malik Monk. Huh? Stanley Johnson. Wait a minute. When you did, gave did I just bad dream this? Did the Lakers miss the play-in tournament? They did missed, that really happen? Missed everything. Wow. <laughs> Let's missed talk about everything. It. Well, first, Gip, look, we know how this thing goes. Anytime a team doesn't meet expectations, someone has to go. Mm -hmm. And normally the first to go is the head coach. Sometimes the head coach and front office goes along with the head coach. I just didn't like the way the Lakers handled that situation. They leaked this information to Woj. Skip, they could leak this, this information this morning. Absolutely. That man should not have had to answer those questions. Well, they wouldn't leak it. They would just announce it. Yeah, right. Yeah, because right. I think they're all going to do big media sessions. Correct. Lincoln, I think LeBron is. Right. But they could have all they could have handled this this morning. Absolutely. For that, even if they had lost the game, last night was not the time mm -hmm. for him to ask answer questions about his job. He could have answered those questions. You're gonna have an end of uh, end of season mm -hmm. press conference today. Mm -hmm. Now is now would be the time. And I've never heard him curse in public before, but he cursed that time. Yeah. I haven't heard S H. Yeah. Because he was hot. I, of course. Right. Go ahead. Because and he knows. Yeah. Really. So Rob, a uh, 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 genie. Uh, the Rambuses, somebody leaked this information to Woj. Yep. You could have ha held on to this. We could have had the conversation on the plane going back home. We could, You could have called me in early this morning and briefed me, even though I know the situation. Yep. But I just believe there, there's a certain level of decorum of professionalism mm -hmm. that should be maintained at all times. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I only gave Frank Vogel 10% of the blame mm. because Frank Vogel didn't put this roster together. Skip, if you give me just ingredients, if you give me chicken, rice, and some vegetables. There's only so many different combinations that I can do. Yep. I might have one one day, might leave one out the other, but I have what I have. We can get upset about Frank Vogel's rotations, yep. but he has what he has. Mm -hmm. He has two superstars that missed a total of 68 games. Yep. I don't know how you expected him to do much more than that. Mm -hmm. The Russ experiment was an epic failure. Mm -hmm. So uh, with all that, and he had a bunch of old guys, Skip, Frank Vogel is known for defense. If you look at the top defensive teams in the NBA this year, all of them have young guys. The Boston, the Memphises, the Phoenix. If you look at their roster, they're loaded with young guys, not 30-somethings. So they put the, he didn't put this roster together. I gave the players 80% of the blame because you're the guy that's actually playing. You say it's a play. Every time I skip, it's a player's league. It's a player's league. This is a player's game. Yep. Now all of a sudden it falls apart. Coach, coach ain't know what he was doing. Mm. I gave skip. I wouldn't have gave him any blame. You, modular acting up. Skip. I wouldn't have given him any blame had he done what the front office asked him to do with Russ. They said if you need to bench Russ, if you need to sit Russ, do what you feel is necessary. You have our blessings. Frank Vogel was unwilling to do that because. I guess he looks at Russ, and Russ is a superstar. He says, I can't do that. He says, if I bench this man, I'm going to lose him. And how at some point in time, if I ask him to go back into the rotation, he's going to look at me like I got four heads. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do that. So I do put some of that blame on him. Yeah, Skip, it left my head puzzling. Somebody like, why the hell you got four, three guys that can't shoot on the court at once? At least and you can't have three. Have one, but not three. Yep. So, Skip, I can only give, I can only give him 10% of the blame. I give the players in the front office because at the end of the day, the players, uh, we're going to talk about this a, a, a little yep. later, they wanted Russ. Uh, 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 Rob Palenka signed off on that to get Russ. So I put, I'm going to put the lion's share of the blame on the front office and the players. Mm. I'm giving Frank Vogel as little blame as I possibly can. 5%. That's what you gave him? No, that's what you gave him, right? I gave him 10. Oh, 10%. 10. Okay. All right. I'm going to restructure the question a little bit <laughs> because there are two issues at hand here okay. that are very important to what just happened or didn't happen to your Lakers. There's a question of blame, but there's also a bigger question of at fault. Right. Okay. Who's at fault here? I believe that Frank Vogel is a 0% at fault. Right. Okay. On, on the blame scale, I'm going to give him 51%. 51? Uh, yes, because, because... <laughs> I stood up. I almost stood up on this table just before the first of the year, back mm -hmm. on January 1st. I said, 
you, you have to remove him. He has become their scapegoat. He has become yes. their reason, mm -hmm. their excuse, their whatever. Like, it's his fault. The, the locker room is saying it's his fault. The locker room tuned him out. And it, it starts from above. And I, I'm saying he's not at fault here because I believe Kurt Rambis basically assumed control of the franchise this year. From all that I've read, all the, the backstory reporting, all the back hall reporting, that everywhere Frank Vogel turned, Kurt Rambis was there to either look over his shoulder or basically undress him in front of everybody else, as in just, just rip and slash him to shreds. In front of the coaching staff, in, sometimes in front of players, that Kurt, and I know Kurt very well, and I have high respect for his high basketball IQ, but obviously he and Linda Rambis are very close. They're the best friends of the owner, Jeannie Buss, so and the operator, Jeannie Buss. So Skip, he was a failure with the Knicks. He was okay. a failure okay. with the Lakers. I, I got it, but he is in control here, I believe. This is my view of this very dysfunctional franchise. And so it's like Frank Vogel got... got just emasculated from the beginning of this year of all of his respect in the locker room. And, and then it started right away with Russ. Russ is uncoachable. They, they, one of the, I think it was the LA Times reporter, maybe it was Ramona Shelburne, I can't remember, I read so much last night, but reported that, that Scotty Brooks, they tried to hire him as an assistant coach because he was the only one capable of babysitting Russ back right. in the Oklahoma City days. Right. Well... They, they let Russ do whatever he wanted to do in Oklahoma City to a fault because he was Sam Presti's diamond in the rough. He, he was everything to Sam Presti. Sam Presti sort of banked his whole reputation. What, remember what LeBron said a couple of months back about mm -hmm. Sam Presti at the All-Star Game? Remember he said, he's the MVP in Oklahoma City. Okay. Right. Well, he, he built his reputation on, I stole Russell Westbrook. What was he, the fourth overall yeah. pick? Well, I didn't see him coming. You said you didn't see him no, coming no, no, at UCLA. No. He just seemed like just another guy on those teams. Correct. But Sam Presti said, I see something there. And, yeah, you saw triple doubles about to happen. You saw triple doubles for entire seasons about to happen. Right. You saw an MVP about to happen. You also saw a completely out of control spoiled brat of a player that you spoiled. Yes. And Scotty Brooks was was just the babysitter. And he did a great job of just basically telling Russ whatever he wanted to hear. Sure, do that, do right. that. So according to the report, from day one, <laughs> Vogel's like, hey, whoever gets the ball off the board, go with it because that's how we run because we have ball hands. LeBron can obviously run the right. break. AD can run the break. Yes. He used to be in his latest high, his high senior school. year in high school. He's a point guard, right? right? Mm -hmm. Can he dribble it and take it? To, sure, sure he can. And we can go through the, the litany of Austin Reeves and various other players right. who can take it and run. And according to the report, Russ said on day one, no, I, I'm the point guard. You know, I want that SH. Give it to me. As soon as somebody gets it off the board, I want it in my hand because that's what I do. And it's what he's always done. And he has been most lethal on the downhill break. As you know, right. that's when his athleticism is just off the charts. Right. When he gets it downhill just going as hard as he can. And then you're either going to have to foul him or he can do those little right. dump off right. dunk assists. But that's when, that's, that's when he's at his best because now his athleticism can take over. Yep. In the half court set, he doesn't he do anything really well in the half he court doesn't. set. Right. He doesn't shoot well. Nope, he doesn't, he doesn't shoot. pass the ball particularly nope. well because, Skip, he, you mentioned it. He has some of the worst hands we've ever Ever seen on the point guard. He is the, the worst hands I've ever seen, and we'll, we'll get to this a little later, but I just got to throw this out. One of the stories had a stat that he had missed 35% of his dunks, and I'm thinking, yes. nobody can miss 35 It's a dunk, mm -hmm. for heaven's sake. Right. You know, it's just like, bam, yeah. you, you throw it down. Every once in a while, they back iron one. Right. Every once in a while, you get blocked by the front of the rim, right. but not not 35%. Yeah. So he's, he'd only made 65% of his dunks, and it got so bad, he quit dunking. Because he couldn't dunk. He right. couldn't hold on to the basketball. Correct. Okay, so that's what Vogel was up against. And then rampant reports today about Lakers texting in the halftime locker room while Vogel was talking. They're texting about their dinner plans. Okay, what does that shock you? No, no, no it just doesn't. Then LeBron got caught one night just in a, a sort of a wide shot. He's on the bench at the end of the bench in a game he's not playing in, and he's texting. Okay, w what do you think? They tuned this man out. And yet, one year ago, one year ago, that team was number one in defense. Right. 
Two years ago in the bubble, that team was number one in defense right. through that bubble year right. in the championship year. Okay, so back to back. I'm talking about number one out of 30 teams yeah. in, in what's called defensive efficiency. Right. And they plummeted all the way down to about 25, and they finished after the last two games, they finished 21st overall. Way to go. <laughs> okay, so from first to 21st at the end of right. the year. Well, well, that's just wrong. Right. And, and obviously, Frank Vogel hung his hat on the defensive end. That's what he always did at Indiana and even at Orlando. But the point was, that's that was his calling card. Right. And once you, you've been on teams, well, not many, because your teams were always so good, but but you know what it feels like when your whole locker room tunes that guy out. Yeah. When everybody, as, as he's talking, you go inside your own head and think, Tonight, I'm going to go do, yeah. right? And I wonder what such and such yeah. is doing. I wonder, I wonder what they're that. doing. I wonder if uh, maybe I should call that girl that I haven't called in a while, right? <laughs> that, that kind of thing. A lot of you know, things go through okay, your head. A lot of things are going through your head except what he's talking about Correct. because his voice was falling on deaf ears. Right. So, again, I, I'm not saying any of this is his fault, but the blame, it, it got so bad that I thought, okay, Jeannie, if you want to save whatever you have, because on paper, I'm going to remind everybody, Preseason favorites, odds makers favorites in the West, the betting favorite overall. There was a big story about this yesterday. The pre, the, the LA Times story had it. They were the betting favorite. The, the, there were more bets that came in on right. them in the preseason than on anybody. Right. So a whole lot of people out there are thinking this is the team to yeah. beat. I, I'm talking about for the championship. Yeah. Okay, so you start with your bar as high as it can go. Correct. And I'm thinking, okay, Jeannie, on paper, it still's got a chance to click if you can get these people healthy, such as Anthony Davis, and it looked like at some point he might come back. And I'm thinking, okay, you have to get Vogel out of there because clearly it, not, not only are they quitting on him, but it's even worse. They're just tuning him out. Right. They're not doing what he teaches, which is on the defensive end. Yeah. Well, to your point, are they just too old to play defense anymore? Yeah, they are. Maybe. You, you could are. argue that. Yeah. But, but I didn't see the energy. I didn't see the desire. I, I didn't see any just, just flat-out, old-fashioned want to. Well, Skip, I, I, I didn't read the story that you read about them texting because if they did that, that's disrespectful, and you deserve exactly what you got. You deserve to be the level C. Because you don't do that. I, I, I get it. Why can't you, like, after the... Where are you going after the game? You're in the locker room. You're going to be icing. You're going to be icing your knees, icing your ankles. Okay, why can't y'all... Okay, guys, what, 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 what you got going on? Why is that so important during the halftime? That's the time that you make adjustments. That's also the time that you have those big leads that you end up blowing. Because y'all bull jiving around on your Did phone. I? If this is true, this is so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. This is embarrassing. Now... I will give Frank Vogel some credit, Skip. He did, late in this, later in the season, try to salvage it by benching Russ in crucial situations. Okay, and I believe that was... He, he was fighting with Rambus and Palenka right, over that, right. back and forth. Because at the end of the day, Skip, do, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Then when he does that, he gets fired. Well, that was a, that was a coaching decision. Yeah, I mean, now, I, I think they wanted him to of bench course they, before he did bench Russ. That's easy to say, Skip, because yeah. guess what? You're pulling the strings. <laughs> yeah, it's but you don't, you, you don't actually, but you you don't actually see the puppeteer. Frank Vogel is the puppeteer, but there's yeah. somebody pulling his strings that's higher up than he is. That is correct. So when it comes down to it at the end of the season, they're going to say, well, Frank did what Frank thought. No, you told him to do this. And, Skip... Until Anthony Davis can stay healthy more than 40 games, until LeBron cannot miss, LeBron has missed like 80 games since, in three years since he's been with the Lakers. They're not going anywhere. You can't surround them with enough talent, given the fact that they're, 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 they're max players, yep. if those guys can't stay healthy for any length of time. Now, we've seen AD's history is that he has been unable to stay healthy with the exception of that one year in L.A., the first year. And then they got a five-month hiatus in between when they last played and they started playing again. That is true. So until that's resolved, you're not going anywhere. Okay. So do I think Frank Vogel's a great coach? No, I think he's a pretty, pretty good, good coach. I agree. And I promise you he will soon get another job right. elsewhere because it's just two years since he won the bubble championship. Correct. Okay. So I think he's highly regarded. Is he a star type coach? Does he have aura about him? Does he have charisma? Does he have a mystique? He has none of that. He's just a guy to yeah. me. But right? Skip, the thing is, no matter what, if he's a guy, he's a star, the star player's got to be willing to be coached. 
and they can't do things because the other guys, because, Skip, other guys see LeBron and AD, whatever they see them do, they feel they feel comfortable in doing it themselves. They don't look at, like, man, LeBron is tenured. LeBron has done this. AD is the top set. They don't see that. They say, well, hell, they breaking the rules. Hell, I'm going to break the rules, too. That is true. You have to set the standard. That's what I, Skip, I've always tried to do that when I was in the locker room. When I got to a position that I knew people, guys were looking at me, yep. I tried to behave a certain way because mm -hmm. I never would. Well, hell, Sharp doing it. Well, he ain't, he's sleeping in the meetings. Yep. He coming in late. He overweight. You have to set an example of positivity, of doing things the right way, because it's so easy to do things the wrong way. And sometimes you can do things the wrong way, Skip, and have success, and you're like, what? <laughs> what the heck? But those young guys are watching. I watch those guys, Skip. You tell you watch that game in its entirety. You tell me when you ever seen the Lakers play as hard as they played last night. They were down nine points with a minute to play in the ball game. They were. And got it to overtime. And got it to overtime. Mm -hmm. Hustling, scrapping, making shots. And Skip, what makes it so impressive? Malik Monk was, in, was on fire, and they took him out. Mm -hmm. And said, hey, uh, 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 Reeves, mm -hmm. you and, and Stanley Johnson and, get, and, 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 and Ellington, bring it home. And they went and got the game in overtime and then did what they did in overtime. You're fired up about that yeah, game. Because I see how these young guys, when, they're, when there's no, when they're not left like, well, Braun will do it or AD will do it, when they say, man, we got to figure this, you know what, out for ourselves. Man, how we get up out of this? Just play hard. Okay, remember, it's against Denver's, like, G League team. What the hell, what the hell you okay. think they were? Okay. McClung is in the G League. <laughs> Austin Reed probably should have been in the G okay. League. Gabriel's right. in the G League. Yep. Stanley Johnson's in the G League. Mm -hmm. Wayne Ellington is a bad, but Skip, he only played probably 15 games this year. And they brought they brought uh, uh they brought the uh, Jones I think that I forget his name Skip they brought he just came up from the G League <laughs> so it was G League versus G League <laughs> but they did play their tails they played the tails off, off. Yeah, they, they did I, I give you that and it was a pleasure to watch and Vogel was sky high after the you, game he he said I I want to revel in this you know I'm putting words in his mouth but he said I want to I want to enjoy this right, right now because I really appreciate how hard they played because he knew I think in his heart of hearts that's my over. swan song yeah it was over. And, and we went out the right way. Right. We played the right way because we played hard. Did you see how fired up, Skip? Did you see how fired up the bench were oh, when the guys God. were doing things? And then when they trapped Forbes in the corner and Austin Reed stole that ball, did you see Frank Vogel it like? Going crazy. I know. No, I, I got it. Okay. So the problem Frank Vogel was up against this year was from the start, the star power went uh, like over the edge uh, into the abyss of, of veteran, like, borderline two old stars because all of a sudden you, you bring back Carmelo and Dwight and then you add Russ and you got an aging LeBron and a hurt, you know, always hurt AD. AD. And and all of a sudden Vogel's overmatched with that group because they're, he, he's... They're too many, he, oh, they're he, better in players he, than he's us. Too, he's too small. You, you know what I mean? He's, yeah. he, he's too... He's even small-minded in how he approaches. He, he's a grinder. He gets in early and watches tape and all that. Well, it worked in the bubble because LeBron was the leader of the team in the bubble. And LeBron could live up better to being the leader of the team on the court. I told you, Father Time tapped him on the shoulder for the first time this year. He couldn't carry the team the way he used to. I don't think he could close the way he used to. And all of a sudden, it's a lethal combination for the head coach, which is why I said, well, let Fizdale do it, because LeBron respects Fizdale. Let somebody else change the voice in the Guess locker what, room. Skip? There were no plans to be made. Hell, you mm -hmm. couldn't go anywhere. What mm -hmm. plans were you making? Who's doing laundry tonight? Mm -hmm. Who's ordering takeout? You couldn't go anywhere. No. There was nothing to do. In, no in the to bubble, go. Let's yes. Go. There was no so it, like you said, I, I understand it was a grind because you're there for a hundred mm -hmm. days yep. and you can't go in or out. There's only a limited amount of things. There's only so much fishing, so much bowling, yep. so much table tennis, video games that you can play. Yep. And I give those guys credit for being able to maintain mm -hmm. their sanity yep. and get the ball across the finish line. That is correct. But this, Kim, you and, can't and have and this. By the way, who else was there in the bubble? Rajon Rondo was there. And there's a new report about speculation that maybe Juwan Howard would be hired as the Lakers coach with Rondo as right. an assistant coach. Well, I believe Rondo was the assistant coach in the bubble because he's the one guy, if you had him in the locker room this year, he's the one guy who he would was challenge. Huh? We, they for, traded for him. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, down the stretch, right. when you really needed, you know, when it was time for him to step up and take the team over the way he did in the bubble. He, right. And he made big shots, and I think he made big 
off the court shots yeah. too for that that team. Well, I think they the needed thing is, that Gip, voice. If, if and that's he was gonna gone. be the case, Gip, Rondo, the, the I guess the word I would use is mercurial. I don't know if you can be a head coach or be an assistant coach with those kinds of ways. Maybe assistant you could be. I don't know if the cons inconsistency Correct. of being the head coach right. would work. But the point is, you said from the start, you like Mark Jackson as the yes. potential next coach. The problem with Mark, and I think I know him well enough to make this statement, I, I just fear he'd last about a day in this organization because this is tough now. This is, you got to walk... Yeah. You gotta be Step you gotta lightly. be you gotta be willing to be your own man. That's what Phil Jackson was so was able to do so well. Pat Riley was able to do so well. Guys that have had success because you you this is a mom and pop shop, and they want to look over your shoulder to see what else you're doing. I agree. And they want to have they want to have they want to infiltrate your staff by putting paying pick people on your staff they so they can keep them abreast of what you say and what you doing. That is correct. And, and Ty Lusa, hell no. Nah. Hey. I'm coming here to coach. I'm coaching everybody, not just LeBron. And I'm going to fill out my staff to how I see fit. Hey, you want to talk about his own man? That would describe Mark Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. Are you sure he would be able to coexist with Kurt Rambis and ultimately with Palenka and Jeannie? I don't. I like your idea. I like him for the locker room. If, if they would give him autonomy and let's say it's your team to coach. Well, I, I don't want the Lakers to turn into a Jerry Jones situation because that's what you that's what you have that's what you have happen when you have ownership in front office constantly meddling. You get that. And even no matter how great of players that you have, when you constantly meddle, you never meet you never reach the potential that you could have if you yeah. get your butt well, out of the way. I, I got it, but it's almost like Genie has assigned Kurt Rambus to coach the coach. Right. Jerry used to say, Jerry Jones in his early days, my job is to coach the coach, as in Jimmy, and right. that finally just right. blew up in but Jerry's Skip, face. I, I, I'm sure that a coach wouldn't have, but I look at Ramos' record when he was with the Knicks and when he was part-time, when he filled in for the Lakers, he's terrible. So what the hell can he tell me? Yeah, he does know basketball. Trust me, he knows. If you sat with him for an hour, you'd say he really knows basketball. There's, there's a difference between knowing basketball and being able to teach basketball. And there's a big difference if you're the head coach having somebody come in and say, you yeah. know what, let me critique you here. Because after a while, it's like, do you want me to coach this team or not? Yeah. And apparently they want Kurt to be the unofficial head coach of this team. Yeah, and it won't work. It, it's not going to yeah. work. It's I not. agree. It'll be interesting to see how all these personalities shake out, gentlemen. Great stuff this morning. And we do want to say congratulations to Austin Reeves. He became the first undrafted rookie in NBA history to have a 30-point triple-double. <laughs> Good stuff from him last night and great stuff from y'all this morning so far. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.